Hi, hey, how are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. So I'm just going to turn the volume up on my PC because it is super quiet. Cool, that should be better. Yeah, yeah. Firstly, Firstly I want to thank you for accepting my invitation and allowing me to talk with you. Oh, thank you for having me. No, I think it's it's really cool. Like, yeah. So you're in. Uh, 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 I want to introduce you to my audience. Can you introduce yourself to my audience? Yeah, of course. Um, hi. So this is actually the first time that my face has been on Instagram in terms of this account. Um, but my name is Linnea, and I am the person behind Coping Amongst COVID-19. Um, I basically run a mental health account just describing my own struggles during the pandemic and also how somebody else might find what I found helpful helpful and also maybe ways we could support each other. Okay, where are you from? Um, I am originally from London um, and I now live um, like near Cambridge. Awesome. So you are a blogger, uh, creator and uh, advocate? Yeah. Is that your profession? Um, not yet. I'd love it to be. <laughs> um, it's something that I think is quite a saturated profession um, for all the right reasons. Um, but I am sadly not a professional writer as of yet, but hopefully one day. And what is uh, COVID-19? You connected COVID-19 with you. What is that? Um, so obviously COVID-19 is the pandemic that the world is struggling with right now. And I think because it's something that the whole world is trying to fight coronavirus and the whole world has had to respond in ways that our generation hasn't seen before. And I think that that put people under immediate pressure that they weren't ready for, they didn't know how to respond to. And it might have meant that people's normal resources, they couldn't access them. Um, and so people were suddenly thrown into situations that they might not have been mentally prepared for as well as physically prepared for. What do you write in your blog? Um, so on my blog, it actually started originally just as a personal diary. It wasn't public. Um, and it's just about my daily reflection, really. So it started when, um, when the UK was in like strict lockdown. So about, you know, how did staying home the whole time how did that affect me and my life and my relationship I live with my boyfriend um on the other hand you know lots of people were living in lockdown whole families in small flats with nowhere to go because there was originally sort of a limit on access to parks and what that sort of change in daily routine meant in terms of mental health in terms of socializing if you're an extrovert and you gain your energy from socializing physically with other people, then that can be really draining having had this three month period where you're just at home and, you know, yes, people were doing Zoom calls and Zoom quizzes, but that connection can only get you so far. So why you thought to create uh, this? Why you wanted to help people? Sorry? Uh, why you thought to create this and why you wanted to help people? Um, I think I've always wanted to write and they say write what you know and I know a fair bit about mental health um, and I've always enjoyed helping people and I've always been quite a creative person so it all just happened quite naturally really. Okay so you wanted to take this as a profession? Yeah I would love to. Okay, so who is your inspiration for writing? Um, so when I was growing up, it was actually in magazines when you would read like the Agni Aunt section. That's sort of where the idea for a blog like mine has come from because I really liked the idea that there's someone who's using their knowledge and experience to help real life problems of the readers. And I think that sort of, way of engaging with a reading audience is what I've always wanted to try to achieve. Um, so obviously these days, most people don't really read an agony art section of a magazine. They're scrolling on their phone or social media. 
So having a visual and written site to the blog on Instagram was just a way to move those ideas into 2020. Okay, so what is your blog name? Sorry? What is your domain for your blog? Uh, coping amongst COVID-19. Okay, so you are helping the people uh, who are affected by COVID-19 and who, who are scared because of COVID-19. Yeah, so obviously COVID-19 primarily is about the virus, but it's affected so many more people than just those who have contracted the virus. It's affected those who have lost people to the virus, lost jobs because of what it's done to the economy. Um, people who perhaps have found themselves living in a home where they actually find it quite stressful or people who have been furloughed for five months now and maybe they're struggling with a daily purpose. Um, there's so many ways in which COVID has affected the daily lives of people. And I think my blog is about exploring the ups and downs of that. So for instance, when we were on lockdown here, at first the sort of way it was spoken about was something that we should all be wanting to get out of as soon as possible and go back to normal. And I wanted to explore the idea that actually, for some people, lockdown might have actually been helpful, as well as it being quite scary for other people. So how can we, when we come out of lockdown, look at creating a new normal that is better than the old normal? Um, so there's both positive and negative lessons that I think we've learned as a society. And we now have a unique opportunity to slightly reformulate what daily society is and we should look to use what we've learned through this pandemic to reshape society so that more people benefit daily. So what do you say uh, about, uh, do you think that uh, COVID-19, you know, expires in some days or it will be with a uh, human or, uh, or human creates uh, a medicine which will destroy it? Um, I mean, I'm no scientist by any means. Um, but I think if we look at past pandemics, I mean, I know that the pneumonic plague was with people for a lot longer than we think of it. Um, I think whether we get a vaccine or a cure or anything like that, I think even when the virus itself is gone, I think the impact it's made on society will last for a very, very long time. I think hopefully. Um, those of us alive now will never have to go through this again. And hopefully the lessons that we learn will mean that should there be a pandemic in the future, that as a global society, we can handle it much better. What kind of help are you giving to the people? What kind um, of help? So my help is more about um, advice on coping mentally. So dealing with the stress either from watching the news that is so troublesome and worrying on such a large scale and it can make you feel quite hopeless. It's about dealing with the daily stresses of life that people may have been struggling with prior to COVID and how that might have escalated during COVID, how to cope with if you're going back to work and you're, you know, you've adjusted to a different time scale of living, how to cope if you need some alone time but now that lockdown is kind of over you feel pressure to go and socialize um yeah so it's just tips really to try and calm the mind try to look after your own boundaries try to discuss that everyone is going to have good and bad days and it's not all about smiling and pretending it's okay because it's certainly not okay um but also it's okay to say it's not okay and actually for most people, the way in which they're struggling, you're not going to be alone out there. And I think connecting over a medium like Instagram or Twitter, it can actually be a, a real comfort to people if they feel that they can't speak to the people who are physically in their lives. So how many people got benefit uh, because of your words? Um, I mean, that's hard to say. Um, at the moment, um, I have 300 followers. I would like, of course, for that to grow. And if one person reads a message and it means something to them, even if 
they pass that on in person then that is someone responding and gaining something from that but even if just one person reads it and it helps them that's absolutely fine like I'm more than happy to call that an achievement because that's still one less person suffering and feeling like they're on their own with it. So what is the difference that you observed before COVID and after COVID? I'm sorry, people? what was that? Uh, what is the difference that you observed in people before COVID and after COVID? So I think um, at the very beginning of COVID, there was a huge push to feel more part of the community and look after those around you perhaps neighbors that actually you might not have met before to make an effort to shop at local businesses um you know just to check on one another i know that myself and a lot of others that i've spoken to it's actually meant that ironically they connected a lot more with family and friends who are further away because it's become more normal to speak on Skype and Zoom and connect more over social media, it's meant that long distance friendships and family members that don't live close to one another in the past sort of four or five months, they've actually spent more time connecting than perhaps they did in the year previously because they weren't in the habit of making those connections, having the time to do that. Um, I think also it's, changed people's attitudes to a work-life balance with everyone who is working um initially you know 80 percent of people were working from home where possible i think that's changed the corporate attitude in terms of what can be done from home versus what can be done in the office um and i think it's also helped people to reassess their balance of work and life so for instance if previously they might have spent three hours a day commuting to a job that pays well, but they never got to see their kids. But then in lockdown, they got used to being there for their kids every day, doing bedtime, eating meals with them. They might have discovered that actually that's what means more to them. So then they're now going to look to rebalance that, whether it be working four days rather than five days a week or looking for a job that's closer to home. Um, I think it's definitely changed that sort of mindset okay so how to come from this kind of this this mindset you know people are still scared of uh, this covid still are uh, a lot of countries still fighting with this and what do you what do you say about this i think that it's it's right to be scared it's an unprecedented time it's a really scary event and i think it's important to realize that even if where you're living doesn't have severe levels at the moment, if lockdown is relaxed where you live, I think it's important to keep an eye on what's happening globally because even if where you are feels safe at the moment, we don't know what's going to happen. There might be a certain wave in places that currently feel safe. And I think it's really, really important that we act as a global community. So I think if you're somewhere that is perhaps more privileged, it's really important to try and see how you can engage with communities that don't perhaps have so much funding from their governments. So you know, donating to charity, when you go to the grocery shop, if you can afford it, give some food to the food bank for those that are less fortunate. Um, sign petitions to make sure that there is adequate care happening where it's not. And I think you're basically making sure that you feel empowered to make the changes that you want to see. And whether that's in your local community or a community far away, I think essentially we're all part of the same world. And I think the pandemic has made that clearer than ever. Did COVID uh, affected you? Sorry? Did COVID affected you? Um, so not physically. I've been lucky enough not to catch it, or at least not knowingly. Um, but I have been furloughed from my job, uh, so it is now August and I was furloughed in the first round of furloughing, so it's been quite some months and that has been quite the journey, um, but I think it's been a very interesting time for me to explore my own thoughts, to explore the thoughts of the world, which is, you know, something that your channel is great for looking at um and luckily i have been 
very mildly affected. You know, other people have been much, much worse, be it financially, through loss, um, through, you know, I know people who were supposed to go and see family members for perhaps the last time they might have been able to and they weren't able to make those flights. Weddings have been cancelled. People couldn't attend funerals that otherwise they definitely wanted to. Um, so I think it's looking at the cost in terms of human emotions as well as the economic cost or the cost just directly in lives lost. I think it permeates much further than that. Okay, how many people got affected in your state? Um, I'm not quite sure of the numbers, but it's been relatively low where I live. So you're safe? Yes, I, I, I feel pretty safe, yeah. So what do you say to the world who watches this video about COVID and how to, uh, you know, do you have any uh, thing to say to the people? Um, so I think in terms of advice, it is about making sure that you check a range of media for a fair understanding of what is going on both in your local area and globally. Um, I think in terms of protecting yourself, just try and be aware that what you do in your actions is more than ever going to affect somebody else. So even though you may not know these people, try and be considerate of strangers as though they're someone that you do know and do love and do care for because you don't know how much of a chain reaction anything could lead to. In terms of mentally, I think it's really important to stay clued up, but I think it's also important to not allow yourself to get overwhelmed. So maybe dedicate a certain time to the day when you look into the news, but don't watch it the whole day long because I've made that mistake and it's really sad and really tough. Um, you know, try to find a happy balance between getting on with your day and also realizing that this is not the normal world. So you can't expect normal levels of productivity from yourself. If some days you find yourself just overwhelmed, that's horrible and I'm sorry but it's also okay you can't expect yourself to be a Disney character acting as though everything is wonderful and get all the chores done do the, all your jobs be a mum and look after the kids um, and run a household like you're not superwoman you just can't and that's okay so I think you need to be kind in the limits that you set yourself you need to also be kind enough to yourself to know when you need to ask for help and that can be uncomfortable for a lot of people I think it's a time where if you can give help please do in any way that you feel comfortable and if you need help and you're uncomfortable asking please swallow your pride ask for help people want to support you and if you feel as though that help is not there from the avenues it should be speak up complain protest be it physically online um if you don't feel safe to do so yourself maybe try to encourage others who are in a safer position to do so okay can i put this video on my youtube channel with your permission yes of course yeah. thank you thank you so much for giving time your time and uh, telling uh, telling me about a lot of things yeah. thank you very much for having me yeah take care and you bye bye